It's easy to become a little homesick at this stage of a tour, but each flight with our Australian crew is like setting foot on Australian soil again. 30,000 feet up, of course. This is the only part of the trip on which Miss Australia actually travelled with us. She was also having a wonderful tour. Hollywood, mecca for film fans, home for film stars. The city of dreams, a glittering neon lit metropolis where every business has at least an outward veneer of show business. The day of the Hollywood Gold Cup, the race of champions, one of the richest in the world. There's room for over 30,000 cars, but try and find a parking spot. The accepted casual dress would never do for Royal Ascot. At the entrance, a bronze of great California bred champion Swaps, holder of three world records on this track. Escalators and elevators carry patrons to the four floors of the grandstand. Today is one of the last of a 55 consecutive day meeting, which explains the dirt track and the constant grooming it gets. In the land of shiny automobiles, track stewards prefer more sedate horse-drawn transport to their positions. While in the centre of the course, an artificial lake is home for a family of swans, with a pretty goose girl as hostess. If beauty be in the eye of the beholder, then this could well be it. Among the early arrivals, and no doubt feeling a tingle of excitement, Miss Australia, an official guest. Famous film director Mervyn Leroy and Mrs Leroy with top jockey Willie Shoemaker and his wife. Mr Leroy is serving his 13th term as president of Hollywood Park Turf Club. And there's Jimmy Durante, irrepressible as ever. But it's Gold Cup time and jockey Ray York takes Colorado King onto the track. With four Gold Cups to his credit, Johnny Longdon will try again on Bold Commander. Top American commentator Harry Henson takes over the description. And there they go, Native Diver. He is going to the front. Viking Spirit is second, Bold Commander third, Final Command is fourth, Drill Side fifth. Colorado King, sixth on the rail, Desert Chief, Mr. Consistency, going by the stern the first time, it's Native Diver in front by three lengths, Final Command is second by three quarters of a length, Viking Spirit, third on the inside by a one leg, Drill Side, fourth by two lengths, Bold Commander is fifth, Colorado King, sixth, and Mustard Blaster Trails. Now it's Native Diver in front, Colorado King is second on the outside by a hit into the stretch. It's Colorado King on the outside by a hit, Native Diver is second by two lengths, Viking Spirit third, and here comes Mustard Foster in the middle of the track. It's Colorado King in front, Native Diver and Mustard Foster, Colorado King in front, and Colorado King is the winner by a length and a half, Mustard Foster second by a neck with Native Diver finishing third. Well deserved applause from nearly 60,000 spectators for Ray York and his first Hollywood Gold Cup. Colorado King starting a short price favorite, Rule Supreme. And so to the beautiful city of Melbourne, Australia for the Melbourne Cup Carnival, the biggest and most spectacular meeting in the Southern Hemisphere. It's a week of racing that gets underway with the Craven A Stakes down Flemington's straight six course. Compare Australian commentator Bert Bryant's description with his overseas counterparts. Left to run in the rich Craven A Stakes, Star of Heaven is well out in front of Brandy Ladd being hard ridden next to the rails. They're followed by a tent of Ferguson and Ripper with Sunny Coronation coming home well. But Star of Heaven goes on to win the rich race easily at the finish from Brandy Ladd and third is Sunny Coronation. Star of Heaven comes into the winner's enclosure and Prince William of Gloucester is present as the WD and HO Wills Craven A Trophy is received by Sir Norman Robinson on behalf of the owner. 
Cup time, Melbourne becomes host to visitors from every state and from overseas, especially from New Zealand. And on more than one occasion, New Zealand thoroughbreds from across the Tasman have journeyed home triumphantly, taking the beautiful gold trophy with them. Melbourne is the financial centre of the Commonwealth, and local and international companies are contributing to an aura of change that's obvious. Signs are reflected in a skyline steadily reaching upwards. In common with an expanding nation, Melbourne is growing fast and expects a population of four million by the turn of the century. But cup time in Melbourne is not confined to racing. There's a tremendous program of cultural and social events. Scenic and the many tourist attractions take the limelight. Inside many buildings, Outstanding floral decorations are displayed. So the Melbourne Cup is much more than just a horse race. It's the centrepiece of a national racing carnival. Flemington Racecourse is itself a picture, a splash of colour for which over 50 full-time employees have worked almost 12 months. For the ladies, it's also a parade of fashion. No doubt originally inspired by Royal Ascot, but today the styles here are unsurpassed. Among the visitors, we meet Ford Australia executive Walter Booth and Mrs Booth. There are celebrities like gold medalist Dawn Fraser. American Olympic gold medalists. Fashion goes to every lady's head, including another Olympic star, Betty Cuthbert. And it's certainly not by accident, for the Victoria Racing Club in conjunction with the cup meeting conducts a fashion competition with prizes worth thousands of pounds. Cars, flying holidays to America and New Zealand are just a sample of the prizes to be won each day. There are the keys to a brand new Falcon sedan for the wearer of the most elegant hat. The very centre of all these events is of course the running of the cup itself. This year, there are 26 starters in the big two-miler. Victorian Governor Sir Rowan Delacombe is host to New South Wales Governor Sir Eric Woodward. They're at the barrier, and here's Bert Bryant. Ready to run in the Melbourne Cup. Racing now, Sir Day near the extreme outside dwelt at the start and races across behind the field to be last on settling down. Romanda takes up the early running and shows out about a length and a half clear of Gadam Gadam, followed by Bon Falu, Battle Standard, Strauss in the centre of the track and so is Polo Prince. Will Town is wider out with Miranda moving up into a good position. Coming down the straight the first time here and Romanda shows out. It's Romanda about a length and a half clear of Strauss, followed by Naranda moving forward. Then Gadam Gadam and Jermaine in behind them, Will Town, Battle Standard and Polo Prince. Swinging along towards the five furlongs post though, it's all Romanda. Holds a long lead, Polo Prince moving up on the outside of Strauss third, followed then by Straight Irish LKL and Bon Falu well in the picture. Anybody's race at this stage as they came down past the two and a half furlongs post where Romanda is stopping very quickly. Polo Prince claims the lead on the outside. Side. Strauss is third on the fence and Welltown with a flying finish in the centre. One furlong to go though it's all Polo Prince. He's drawing away with great strides and Polo Prince will go on and win the Melbourne Cup from LKL with Welltown a nice third. The smiling triumphant jockey on Polo Prince is about the happiest man on the course. The presentation is made to the owner by Governor-General Lord De Lisle. Polo Prince joins illustrious company in the annals of the Melbourne Cup, a fine horse discovered by a great race. Around the world, the story is the same. Royal Ascot, with its royal tradition and pageantry. Emerald Cross with Zaliuk is challenging, and Zaliuk has just pipped Gellert at the post in a photo finish. Paris, the city of the Seine, and Joan of Arc. The glamour and colourful contrasts of racing without turf at Hollywood Park. Colorado King in front, and Colorado King is the winner by a length and a half. Buster Foster second by a neck with native day. Finally, Australia's Melbourne Cup Carnival at beautiful Flemington Racecourse. Prince, he's drawing away with great strides, and Polo Prince will go on and win the Melbourne Cup from El In years gone by, and for many more to come. The world calendar of turf champions will continue to receive constant and notable additions from the meetings at Royal Ascot, Longchamp, Hollywood Park and Flemington.
for they are surely the finest four.